Hi, everyone. Coach Matt Francis here, defensive coordinator and face-off coordinator at Providence College Lacrosse. And I'm here talking about face-offs, specifically ground balls, clamps, and counter moves. Uh, I'm going to show you some of my favorite drills to develop those skills and technique to help you win uh, the most draws that you can and win the most face-offs that you can for your team. But first off, I really want to thank Coach Shamadi and the Richmond Lacrosse staff for starting the Coaching Through Cancellation platform and inviting me on to talk about the face-off game for you and hopefully give you some drills and, and things to work on uh, during this challenging time uh, in, in the world. So uh, without further ado, let's get rolling here um, and talking about face-offs. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, we really want to talk about, you know, start from the top. What are the jobs and goals of the face-off man and the face-off unit? Uh, for us at Providence, we talk about winning possession, most and first and foremost. What's the job of the face-off unit? You got to win possession. Um, secondary to that, you're looking to create transition opportunities for your offense and stop and deny all transition opportunities against you on defense. Um, some goals that we talk about uh, for the face-off unit, we want to win 60% of the face-offs. That's our goal uh, with the shot clock era. Um, Try, you know, starting to balance out possession. We feel like if you can win 60% of the face-offs, that's when you can really start to create a possession imbalance and start to really influence the outcome of the game from a face-off percentage standpoint and, and tip, the, tip the scales there in your favor, put the field on tilt a little bit, play and make it, take it, hopefully. Um, we want to outground ball our opponent in every phase of the game and then the ultimate stat column, but certainly in the face-off game. Uh, and in the, in the name of creating transition opportunities, we want to generate six shots off the face-off game. We're, we're hoping to score two goals per game. And certainly, you know, we don't want to give up any goals against in transition off the face-off. So what are the skills necessary to, to accomplish those jobs and goals? Ground ball ability, face-off technique, and wing play. For the purpose of this presentation, uh, we're going to be talking mostly about ground ball ability. Uh, and, and in face-off technique, we're really going to be talking about initial clamp, uh, and specifically counters to win as many face-offs as you can after the initial whistle. And what are th some things to do uh, to work on your ability to counter after the initial clamp? So ground ball ability, where two hands on your stick for every single ground ball operation here at Providence College. We want to run through ground balls at full speed. Um, we certainly practice both regular grip ground balls and picking up ground balls motorcycle grip or you might not have a chance to switch hands uh, from your face-off grip stance. Uh, we talk about accelerating through the ground ball in contact. Do not slow down. Do not crow hop into the ball. Keep our feet moving and speed up. Accelerate. Um, that's going to allow you to potentially draw fouls, keep the ball going in your direction. Um, but also, if, as you're accelerating through the ball, you know the contact is not going to affect you as much because you're just getting low running through the ground ball. The next one is a big one for me, cradle off the ground. No pop-ups. If you don't cradle and you pick up the, the ball right away, the uh, ball is likely to pop up into the air into the air, and allow your opponents to check you, um, you know, bigger window for error. Uh, you cradle off the ground, lock that ball into your pocket. Um, it's going to help flatten out the mesh um, after it's pushed into the back of your stick for the initial face-off. Um, so I'm big. that's a big nitty-gritty detail of cradling off the ground to increase your ground ball um, success. So what are some drills to develop ground ball hand dexterity um, and really develop the skills necessary to, to be a great ground ball player? These are four of my favorite drills to develop ground ball hand dexterity and the skills necessary to, to really improve your skill at picking up the ball. 52 pickup, crossover dribbles, box out drill, rebounder GBs. Really touches on four distinct areas of ground balls that you're going to encounter and need to excel at in the face-off game. 52 pickup uh, is a play on, you know, your grandpa, your uncle, you know, saying, hey, son, you want to play a, a card game? Yeah, what is it? 52 pickup. Oh, sure, I'd love to play. Dumps the 52 card deck out of the ground and says, pick them up. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, you see, I'm just dumping out a bucket of balls for our face-off men, and we're picking them up. You know, these are squishy orange STX balls, like soft balls. These are tennis balls. These are taped up tennis balls, so they're lighter weight. These are not real lacrosse balls, making it really tough to lock it into our pocket. You can see here we're working on picking up motorcycle grip ground balls. 
tapping them to ourselves, scooping through, cradling off the ground. And then dunking them into the bucket. Certainly we do this regular grip as well. Here I've got them switching from motorcycle grip to regular grip in an effort to simulate, you know, being ready to make a lacrosse play after picking up a ground ball. But there, you see a pop up there, uh, you know, because 39, this player doesn't cradle it off the ground. He doesn't cradle it right away, doesn't lock it into his pocket. There, that's a much better job. Um, so you see them, even though they're motorcycle grip, they're cradling, switching hands to make a lacrosse play to dunk it into the bucket. You don't cradle off the ground, you, a lot of these balls will pop up out of the stick. Working on tapping it, picking up balls, scooping through on unique angles, uh, really just getting better at picking up the ball. Crossover dribbles, simple, but you know, 52 pickup really works on picking the ball up off the ground. This is working on picking up bouncing ground balls or catching the ball out of a face-off exit. Um, two versions of this. Right now, the player is working on what I call crossover dribbles, rotating his wrists under. You're rolling that sidewall under the ball as he's crossing over. I'm just working on catching the ball, getting a ton of reps. Now, it's, this is what I call the over version of this drill, rotating his wrists over top. Um, in the opposite direction, just really getting good at catching balls in unique spots, staying bent, staying athletic. Uh, we work on this drill mostly righty uh, because that's what hand the stick is in when you're facing off, but you can do this drill as well lefty just to develop that hand dexterity and, and increase your ground ball skill. Rebounder GBs. Um, the best way to do this drill is tossing it motorcycle grip against a rebounder. Um, in time, if you don't have a rebounder like this, you can do it off a concrete wall. Um, anything low that's going to give you a weird bounce. Toss it motorcycle grip, and then on the rebound, switch to regular grip to pick up a ground ball. Um, if you've got a brother or sibling or a parent that's willing to do this, they can give you a little pressure like I'm doing. I'm trying to create all types of different pressure here um, for our guys to experience picking up tough ground balls. Checks, you know, experiencing ball pressure to roll away and throw it to a teammate giving them pressure on their left side, on their right side, chasing them, working on clearing our hands and experiencing ball pressure to throw pass uh, under duress. This is my favorite version of rebounder GBs where he's got to run through a butt end of mine, call it like shed drill, um, where you're running through a face off opponent and then you got to run through a tough ground ball and a check. There I'm trying to simulate an opportunity where you might have to bounce or roll the ball to your teammate after picking up a tough ground ball. So we worked on 52 pickup, picking up balls off the ground. We worked on catching the ball in crossover dribbles, um, you know, with exit ground balls. Rebounder GBs is working on funky ground balls that are bouncing around in, on the turf and experiencing pressure. Box out drill is really like a close quarters combat ground ball drill. Uh, where you might not be out of your stance yet, the ball is rolling around, and you're working to box out your face-off opponent. Working on sinking your hip level, staying low, bending your knees, getting wide with your, with your elbows and your back, using your stick as leverage to stay in between your opponent and the ball. On the second whistle, you can either scoop through or kick it to space and then run through a ground ball. Great job here. Um, both, both men doing a great job of competing um, and staying low and fighting for position. So ground balls, in, in my opinion, are the most important part of the face-off game. You can lose every clamp, every counter, but if you pick up 70% of the ground balls, you're gonna be an All-American. So uh, really, really challenge and encourage you guys during this time uh, where you might be working on things on your own, uh, more so than with teammates because of the social distance requirements. Ground balls is a great place to start. You don't, all you need is a ball uh, or a bucket of balls, and you can do all of those drills. Uh, pretty much on your own. So uh, next thing is face-off technique. Uh, we're going to really work on the initial clamp and, and counters here for the sake of this presentation and talking about knee down, motorcycle grip, but some points of emphasis for your stance. You want to be low, balanced, powerful, and explosive. You really want to plant your feet, tuck your toes so you can explode out of your stance, and you want to be angled towards the ball. 
on the initial clamp. This is the biggest thing that I see that needs improvement when face-off guys come from younger levels uh, up through the ranks of high school and into the college game. Biggest thing I see that needs improvement on the recruiting circuit is staying low on your initial clamp. Um, when you're beating people with speed or you're better than your opponent, you could get away with punching your left hand up to the sky to kind of take a shortcut and, and clamp the ball and pinch the ball out more quickly. But against somebody who's of equal hand speed and technique, um, if you go left hand high up into the sky on the initial whistle, uh, you're going to lose a ton of leverage. So really important on the initial whistle, on the initial clamp to be low and explosive out of your stance. Keep your left hand low explode into the ball. Uh, when I say down the line and on the line, that's going to mean getting the skinny part of your throat or your stick over the ball. Um, Face Off Academy and Greg Renlian talk about stuff in the throat. That's what I mean there, if, if, if that's the language you're used to. Uh, but really important, low left hand. Scrape the turf and then make a read, which we'll talk about later in the presentation of What's my counter move? What's my secondary post-whistle move that's going to help me gain control of this ball? Maybe it is lifting up my left hand and sawing down and work it, rocking my butt end back and forth and lifting up a little bit to gain leverage, but not on the initial clamp. Uh, that would be a secondary counter that's going to help you win the ball. He, these are some of those post-whistle counters and secondary moves that I'm talking about. A saw down, again, not my term. That's stole that from Faceoff Academy and Coach Gorenlian. Using your butt end as leverage to rock your butt end back and forth, lifting it up to create, um, you know, some pinch with your sidewall around the ball to get the ball out and around your opponent. Um, but again, sawing down is different than your initial clamp. The initial clamp has got to be low to get over the ball and under your opponent. Then you got to read the clamp, your ball position, and what you need to do to win that ball. Different counter would be like rotating or and spinning to push your opponent off the ball and get your head over the ball. Uh, different than sawing down because you're, you're more about rotating and spinning. Uh, screw drill is a great one for that. Repunch is what I refer to as down the line, on the line. Um, you know, again, Face Off Academy calls that stuff in the throat. You punch down the line to get the throat of your head underneath your opponent's stick and get over the ball. Rejam, maybe you lost on the initial clamp, but you've got enough leverage and your, your right hand is underneath the scoop of your opponent's head, you can slide the shaft of your stick down the line over the ball and in between the ball and your opponent's stick to pull the ball out. Lastly, uh, if you lost the clamp on the whistle, um, you make a decision, you can't execute any of these previously mentioned counters, you bail, you rake, you hook, you check, track the ground ball and, and work to pick it up. Um, Again, you can lose a lot of clamps and still be a great face-off man because you're athletic, you're relentless, you're scrappy, and you're tough on ground balls. So I encourage you um, to work on those things as well. All right, so first counter here would be the, what I call the saw down. Notice on the initial clamp, my left hand is low, scraping the turf. Then I work to saw down, all right, get that, let rock my butt end back and forth, get that top edge over the ball and pinch the plastic around the ball to get it out and around my opponent. That's what we're referring to as a saw down, okay? What I'm seeing too much of at the, at the younger levels, and the biggest thing that needs to be corrected when kids get to college is they're shooting this butt end to the sky on the initial clamp, all right? And that's how allowing them to lose leverage um, for this secondary counter action. Again, rocking the butt end back and forth, lifting it up to pinch the, ball, the plastic around the ball for an exit. Low left hand, then saw down. Rock the butt end back and forth, get over top of the ball, pinch the plastic around the ball for a clamp out and around. I'm showing all forward exits here, but you can certainly exit in any direction necessary with a saw down. Next, this counter uh, secondary clamp is, would be a rotation or a spin. Um, a lot of you guys might refer to this as screw drill, but the sandbag here is designed to really focus on keeping this left hand low, keeping this left hand low so you can spin your opponent off the ball, get over top of the ball, and then make your exit. So this would be the second post whistle secondary counter here in our list. 
now we're using the rep straps, just a, a different angle. All right, third one, clamping down the line. All right, first couple here, are clamping down the line to block against the rake. And then exiting. Here's slow down after, you know, clamp versus clamp, you're tied up. What do you need to do? You need to slide your hands to the right down the line to get the skinnier part of your, your throat of your head underneath your opponent's sidewall. By sliding your hands to the right, it'll allow you to stuff the throat, get the ball into that sweet spot, and exit with the ball. Really effective. Really effective, tied up in a clamp, sliding your hands to the right, stuffing the ball into the throat of your stick, and then making a decision to ex where to exit with the ball. Rejam. Similar, uh, but, but if you're using a rejam, it's likely that you didn't win as much of the clamp as you would like, but you still have enough leverage here. Uh, as I'm wiggling my fingers, you can see that my right hand, your right glove, uh, there's a window of opportunity because you're still low enough underneath the scoop of your opponent. Here I'm wiggling my, hand, my fingers just to, as a point of emphasis. All right, but this is legal because your hand is wrapped around your, the shaft of your stick. What you want to do is use your right hand as leverage to slide underneath your opponent's stick and over top of the ball. So you get in between the ball and your opponent's head, and then you're able to pull the ball out after you jam. Really important to flatten out your stick here on the rejam. If you don't, you're more likely to roll over top of the ball when you pull it out, uh, and you end up leaving the ball here. Okay. Lastly, with the rejam on exiting, I'm a firm believer in exiting to your side, to your left, as opposed to going through your legs. Because as you do that, you can swing your hips around all in one motion and box out your face-off opponent. Like so. Again, some slow rejams here, sliding your shaft in between your opponent's stick and the ball. A perfect rejam would end up with the ball right here next to your hand and then you flatten your stick and you pull it out to the side. Again, hands wrapped around your shaft, so you're not using your hand on the ball at all. Um, you're using your hand wrapped around your stick as leverage in between your opponent's stick and the ball. Here's some great live looks at uh, rejams out of some drills and some live face-offs. So this is a tie-up drill, which I'll show you in a little while. Dummy tie up, one player is not doing anything, but he's half clamped over the ball. And then we're just working on executing the jam technique, not ending up on top of our opponent's stick. Otherwise that'd be called a hold, uh, pulling it out to the side and scooping up a ground ball. Here, this is Providence College in our alumni game. See the, the man in the black jersey, really good, good execution of a rejam. Number 39 here, won most of the ball in the initial clamp, but he doesn't spin. What I would write, his secondary move should be a spin and rotation to push black player's stick off the ball. Instead, he kind of just sits here, uh, which allows 35 and black to use his leverage underneath the scoop of his stick and slide his shaft in between uh, his opponent's head and the ball. Really good look at a rejam. Here's a live face-off, really good camera angle to see what the rejam looks like. So clamp versus clamp. Right away, man on the left side of the screen has got 75% of the ball. Right now, I think he should saw down, really use his butt end to rock back and forth, get a little bit more of the ball, but more importantly, Squeeze that plastic around the ball, get it in the sweet spot, and exit. He should be able to get this out relatively quickly here. Instead of sawing down, he doesn't do much of anything. The player on the right has his right hand wrapped around his shaft but underneath the scoop of his opponent's head, so he's able to slide his shaft in between the ball and his opponent's stick to pull it out. Bang. Excellent rejam. 
So if you're unable to execute any of those clamp versus clamp counters, you might have to bail, rake, and hook. These are initial rakes and hooks here. Now with the rules the way they are, it's important that you hook underneath the plastic of the stick or the glove. You cannot get anything on the forearm or the elbow. Here's some examples of executing a rake and hook after an initial clamp as opposed to raking and hooking on the initial whistle. Clamp versus clamp. Player on the right is beat, doesn't have a window to execute any of our other reclamp counter moves. So he rakes it, doesn't get it out, and now he's looking to hook. His hook's a little high on the forearm. I think that's probably gonna be called a hold nowadays. If he hooked that a little lower, uh, would have been a perfect hook. And obviously you can see the effectiveness there. The ball um, drops right in front of his feet instead of allowing his opponent to cleanly exit with the ball for a fast break. So what are some drills that we use at Providence College to develop these, this technique and these counter decisions? First off, for stance consistency, we just do a simple drill called down-ups for the guys to get into their stance, in and out of their stance consistently. Low and explode drill is really working on the initial clamp. And again, I can't stress this enough, staying low with your left hand on the initial whistle, scraping the turf, scraping the turf. That will allow you to then make a read for your counter moves, your secondary clamps, um, which we work on via tie-up drill and four-point stance tie-up. First drill. Down-ups, really simple. Coaches got the whistle ready, but we don't even blow the whistle. Uh, we're saying down. Again, we want our right knee angled towards the ball. Toes are tucked, planted, feet planted firmly in the ground so that on the whistle, you can explode. You don't need to waste time taking a false step here or here because our toes aren't planted firmly. Down. Line them up, make sure it's consistent. And then they say, we say up and they're getting in their stance consistently. Low and explode drill. Notice here we have the ball at the scoop of the plastic, really emphasizing our face-off men to clamp down the line and on the line, all right? If they end up ahead of the line here, they're probably pushing the ball into their opponent's stick, all right? But low and explode, really working on keeping our left hand low, scraping the turf, punching the ball into the throat of the stick. So two main points of low and explode, staying low with your left hand, low with your center of gravity, and stuffing the ball into the throat of the stick by clamping down the line. Couple looks at it here. Different angle. Again, some resistance training with the, the guys using our rep straps. Notice that the initial clamp is low with the left hand, and then this near face-off man, then his butt end punches up to pinch the ball. Low on the initial clamp, then he pinches up. A little high on that initial clamp there. Another angle at it. All right, for low and explode. Less emphasis on putting the ball up the, at the scoop of the stick. Okay, this is a sandbag, but you guys, if you don't have a sandbag, you can use anything that's going to put an emphasis on keeping your stick low. Okay, uh, if you end up rotating over top of your obstacle, then your left hand is too high. I would recommend instead of having this, the bag or the obstacle here, putting it on a 45 degree angle um, so that your initial clamp meets that obstacle. In this case, a sandbag, and you can really get a feel for if your left hand is low enough on your initial clamp. That's the biggest thing on the initial clamp, staying low so that you give yourself a chance to make a secondary punch move uh, to win the face-off draw. So if you can envision this sandbag right here, uh, the face-off man would definitely have a feel if, I, if my left hand's coming up too high, if I'm sliding off of that sandbag, then I need to really adjust and really work on scraping my knuckles on the turf. Tie-up drill. All right, so in this drill, we're both starting half clamped over the ball. One player, in this case me in the black sweats, is not doing anything live. I'm just starting tied up. The other player who is going live on the whistle is making a read to determine which counter move is necessary to get the ball with one quick punch 
or counter move and then exit. that whistle good saw down there you can see on that secondary punch the butt end comes up because it allows him to get his throat uh pinched around the ball a little combo of a little saw down and spin really good repunch there punching into the ball stuffing the throat getting down the line Same thing, good job getting into the ball, stuffing the throat, getting the ball in the sweet spot. That one you can see the way my stick bent back, likely in a live face off that was pushed into the back of your opponent's stick. Um, so that's something you gotta be careful of when you're working on tie ups. This is live, again, one, one dummy, one live tie up drill. Good saw down, using your butt end as leverage to pinch that plastic around the ball and get out. Now, four point stance, live tie ups. This is simulating the initial clamp has already happened. Low left hand, low butt end for each face off man. You wanna have a flat back, all right? You wanna be explosive, have your weight under you going towards the ball and then read the tie up uh, to decide, do I want to saw down? Do I want to Repunch down the line and into the ball? Do I want to rotate and spin hard uh, to push my opponent off the ball? Uh, do I want to rejam? Is it necessary that I rejam? Or do I need to hook, rake, rake, hook, bail, and track down a ground ball, make it a 50 50? So you get a live look here. So say down, set, get them in the four point stance, line them up, tied up. And then on the whistle, they're making their counter moves. Really good spin there. Low left hand, good rotation, hard rotation, pushed me off the ball. Another one, good spin, a little bit of a combo of a spin and a repunch down the line to make sure he stuffed the ball into the throat of his stick. All right, this player went for a rejam. Then he has the bail, good saw down with the man on the right, gets the ball, exits. So we're saying down, set, getting them tied up, four point stance, whistle, saw down here. All right, you see him using that butt end to torque the ball into the, into the throat of his stick and he pinches it out. So there you have it, guys. Some of my favorite drills to work on ground balls. Um, a huge emphasis on your initial clamp, staying low with your hands, scraping your knuckles on the turf, and punching your hands into the ball, stuffing the throat, and then really working on like five variations of secondary counter moves after the initial whistle, after the initial clamp. How can you do the right thing to make the right read to win the ball and win the clamp for your team. So hopefully that helps you out. Again, face-off game kind of lends itself to this idea of social distancing that we have to do right now. Um, so you can pick up a ton of ground balls, get a lot of whistle reps, and, and do a lot of things on your own to really get better so that hopefully sometime soon when it's safe, we all get back out there on the field, you're ready, you're ready. So again, I'm Matt Francis, Associate Head Lacrosse Coach at Providence College. Um, my email and my social media handles are below. Uh, if you have any questions about what I discussed or anything about the face-off game, please feel free to email me or reach out to me on social media. Uh, I'd be excited and happy to talk shop with you about lacrosse. Thanks again for coaching through cancellation, for tuning in. Um, and again, thanks to the Richmond staff for having me on to talk about face-offs. Good luck. Stay safe. Go Friars.